So I think we can start in a bit. Hello to everyone. Honored to be back to tell you a little bit of my experience with a cell booster range. Today, it will be a little bit more of advanced techniques and different kind of indications for the cell booster. And I will talk a bit about the capabilities of the product on its own and also in combination with other kinds of procedures and products. If you have any kind of questions, please put them not into the chat. So please put them into the questions and answers part so that we can later go on through the questions and then we'll be, hopefully we'll be able to answer these questions. Sometimes even meanwhile, we can be able just to answer some of the questions or maybe they will be answered by me by talking over the slides. And if anything should be, just please raise a hand or maybe put it in the Q&A part so that we can get to it later on. So hello to those who just entered. I'm looking forward to tell you about my experience since today and also show you some kind of different techniques and indications for the cell booster range. For those who do not not know me yet, my name is Timur Taskizen. I'm a dermatologist based in Zurich, Switzerland, and I've been working with the products for now more than two years. And I like to use the products in a lot of procedures um, as an add-on, but also standalone, the products are really, really interesting. So this time I don't go into much depth about the shock technology or about the cell booster, but to those who are maybe new, I just wanna give a quick recap of what cell booster is. So as you can see here, the key components of this cell booster are hyaluronic acid, which is stabilized by this patentic technique, which is called shock technique. You have um, stabilized also the nutrients which are inside of it. So this is something that is unique with this kind of technique. So you have the amino acids, you have the vitamins, and the antioxidants, which are stabilized in the special formation of the hyaluronic acid. You know how um, usually most of the products work, mainly the mechanism of action is the hydration, the regeneration, and the protection. So the hydration comes from the hyaluronic acid, which attracts and retains the moisture, and by this hydrating the skin. The regeneration comes from the nutrients which are inside. So they promote the collagen synthesis and also the regeneration processes from within in a cellular level. That's why this special product is called Cell Booster. Protection is also really, really, really important because as we age, there are different kinds of internal and external factors. And it's always good to have a friend by your side. And this is done by the antioxidants which are also inside of the mix of this special product. But the specialty about this is it's not in a mix, it's stabilized within its helix. There are four types of the cell booster, just a quick recap, because I guess you all know about this. Cell booster lift, cell booster glow, cell booster shape, and cell booster hair. Each made for different kinds of indications, and I will talk about the kind of indications later on, but also sometimes you can just use them for different um, options in the skin. You can use them on top of each other. You can use them sequentially. So it, the combination within the line is always possible. What is the benefit of using a cell booster? So it's always, you want to have people with younger skin, you want to give the skin back its elasticity and the hydration, and you want to reduce that what the people are coming for, so the fine lines and the wrinkles. So I will just dive in directly, now because we said it's a little bit of an experienced level today. So um, I will just jump into the face rejuvenation. So what can we do 
with the phase and what are the expected results from our patients. Because usually our patients come to us and don't ask, hey, I want to have a treatment done with a cell booster. Sometimes they do, not because if they hear it or maybe if they saw it with a friend and they are just amazed about the skin glow, about the firmness and about the reduction of the wrinkles without using anything else. And so these are the expected results that the people are just looking for. So they want a firmness of the skin. They want this kind of complexion which is going with it. And sometimes even the people just tell me, okay, you know what? I want to be able to go out without putting any kind of makeup. So what can we do? So, you know, there are different kinds of um, uh, treatments in the face. So upper, the mid face and lower face where we can offer the patients just like different kind of things. But now, as I told you, we're just like today is a little bit of an experience level and different kind of indications because sure, we can do micropapulas anywhere. We can go with a cannula underneath the eye. These are the things that we can do, but sometimes we'd also forget about different kind of options, what we can um, achieve with the products. And sometimes it's also good to know where we can go with these kind of things. As a standalone procedure, so only cell booster, you can use it, for example, for the eye bags. I will go um, into detail later on to show you different kind of techniques in there, what you can do, but you can also um, uh, use it just like widely on the face. These um, um, face treatments are usually done with cell booster lift, cell booster shape, and cell booster glow. Sure, hair is for the scalp, but nevertheless, you can also use it in the beard area or different kind of areas where you suffer of hair loss. Um, I, for one, use cannulas, but also uh, the needles, depending a little bit just like on what you want to achieve. You know? So what you can also really see, for example, in these pictures here, where I treated my patient with the cell booster around the eye area, but mainly not because of his wrinkles, mainly because here of the pigmentation he suffered after an accident. And you can see this nice after picture where you can see that the reduction of the pigmentation has happened, but you can see also something else. You can see this kind of firmness which comes with the skin. You can see um, um, this um, nice reduction of the um, um, of the uh, reflection that is there. You can see this kind of uh, um, uh, less wrinkles which are just appearing there. Um, and also, for example, with this picture here, you can see the reduction of the fat accumulation under the chin with a cell booster shape. And also then just like without putting anything in this area of um, of the lower face, you can see how we can shape the area with the cell booster. Also, a very, very often forgotten part where we can do something about um, the earlobes or the pre-auricular area. Um, just think about injecting there also the cell booster because it's so easy. It's done so quickly and you have really, really nice results. These results, for example, you can get then with a cell booster lift. Um, so this is really the um, thing what you can achieve as a standalone procedure. You can always combine it with different kind of things. This is definitely possible. Um, for example, here you will see the next things what you can do, for example, as a full face treatment. Um, after putting a little bit of a numbing cream on, you can just go to town. You can see she's not even flinching with her eyes. Everything is just like quite normal. And it's just like you go in and out and in and out um, and by aiming then for the dermal area. Here, you can see it also around the eye area. So we just make small, small micropapulas around the eye. Um, and also you can just go above um, uh, in the upper eyelid part as well. So to have also really nice effect in this area as well. So in the end, it's just like um, open up um, your um, kind of limitations that you might have where you can use the product or not. In the end, it's always something where you want to try and give it a try and just see what fits. In the end, it's just like also as doctors, um, as professionals, um, as injectors, we want to make sure that we can achieve some results. And sometimes it's just also where we want to have also a little bit of guidance, but always what's the most important thing is the patient's safety. So when we know we can use the products for these kind of areas, it's always safe to use. Um, 
And so we can get a lot of things by standalone, by, by using the products and having really nice results. Also for the under eyes, you can use the cannula, you can use the needle, you can do it however you feel comfortable and where you have the most knowledge with. Um, so in the end, it's always about the hydration. It's always about the improvement of the texture. And in the end, what comes out is just like the wrinkle reduction without using any kind of um, botulinum toxin, for example, and you will have really nice results uh, with these kind of things. So for example, here you can see the crow's feet and, uh, and the cheeks treated. So you can see this picture from before, now a little bit enlarged, and you can see how the skin seems better. You can still see a little bit of an imprint of the pigmentation, but it's so much less than before. And you can see also um, um, this um, reduction of the overall pigmentation in the face. And this makes this face definitely nicer. And you don't have this kind of incontensities con of um, the pigmentation. Now, here, for example, a really, really nice way without using toxin in the crow's feet area by only using um, the cell booster products in these parts. And you can see how much of improvement there is because when the skin is firmer, when the texture is better, you also have less wrinkles in this area. So in the end, always think about just maybe people who don't want the toxin treatment or maybe are um, hesitant in, in these areas, then you have something in your hands where you can use it as well. And you will be able to provide also really good results. Also, for example, for the perioral area, you can see it's also possible to put it there. Um, you can use a soft filler for that. This is definitely possible. You can use also a filler with, um, with glycerin. So it's just like it will be softer and will be able to provide also a good um, uh, reduction of the wrinkles and also by binding more water inside of the skin. But here, for example, it's also possible to go in um, uh, with a cannula, same technique as you would place a filler, um, but um, to have a little bit Bit of a structure than there and to give a little bit more of this skin texture improvement you can also use a cell booster lift for example there the good thing about the cell booster lift is it's just like it's really something that builds up the uh, the extracellular matrix it helps to rebuild um, uh, the um, the bonds and also in the end by by using the amino acids which are inside you will have really nice induction of collagen there as well without having um, uh, the fear of, of the misplacement of a filler because the cell booster is hyaluronic acid, yes, but it's really liquid. So the, so the likelihood to have um, uh, any kind of occlusion or compression with this kind of, uh, with this kind of liquid product is almost impossible. No? But never forget and never underestimate. You just have to know where you are. You have to know the anatomy. And this is what's really key as being um, an injector so that you also put the patient's safety first. But you can also see with a product like this, you can do a lot of things standalone and by having really nice results. So from the face, we go down. So we go to neck and also um, to the decolletage part. You know? These techniques, I guess, you know, so it's, um, it's really, really good um, to have a really, really nice effect. Don't mind the blood that you can see here. The problem um, is that you, in the end, if you just inject um, uh, in these areas, there will always be, always be a little bit of a bruising because the, the skin and the platysma are so much bond together. So sometimes it's just really hard just to know the right depth. In the end, you can see how I do it and how it's, how it's done just mainly. This is just like how you put these small, small dots in these lines. So you can, you can put these products inside of these necklace lines and then you just go to town and you put them just like in these kind of things there are a lot of products well, how you can well, with we with whom you can do these kind of um, uh, treatments in the end it depends a little bit just like also on um the patient's budget you know, because you can offer a cell booster treatment definitely maybe for for less than maybe a filler or hydroxyl cup um, calcium hydroxyl appetite um, a treatment sure some are more long lasting more some are less but you will be amazed how long lasting these um, uh, products will also deliver good results and in the end sometimes you can also combine them which i will just tell you about later on um, 
So you can see it's also something where you can have really nice results with. Um, don't forget about other body areas, for example, in uh, around the, the buttock area where you also sometimes have patients who suffer of Sorry, who suffer of um, uh, striae, for example, um, because of um, because of losing um, a lot of weight. Now with all this kind of ozempic and and its friends over there, which are just like um, uh, causing a much much bigger weight loss um, um, issues just now. It's just like something where people are just like asking also then for this kind of retexturation of the skin, and they want to just have this kind of um, firmness of the skin back after losing so much weight. And so in the end, you can just provide by doing these kind of injections, by doing the collagen induction, by help, helping them to feel better in their bodies. No? But you can also put it in the hands, which is also really nice. Sure, the results and the hands are maybe not the same as if maybe with a, with a hyaluronic acid. But don't forget, these are um, everything that we put inside our skin is a biostimulation effect. Um, so if, um, even if it's something liquid like the um, cell booster, but don't forget because they have this kind of technique, they have this special kind of stabilization of the amino acids and the nutrients. So it's not just a plain mix. So in the end, you have a sequential release of these kind of products and um, uh, of these ingredients. And in the end, you will have a stimulation for a longer period of time. And in the end, sometimes people just also don't want this kind of puffy um, uh, products just in the hands or anywhere else. Also for the body, for example, the stria after losing weight um, or after gaining weight. Um, so in the end, it's just like it goes both ways. The skin rips off and then you just have this kind of dehiscency in the dermal area. And to reduce that, you can just um, you can um, use these kind of um, products anywhere and you can use it either with a cannula or with the needle. So this is just a quick reminder what I told you about just when we started. The cell booster range is made to be combined you know, within each other, but the cell booster is always a benefit for everyone. Um, so meaning that uh, you can use it for male patients, female patients, young patients, old patients. So in the end, there is really no um, a product uh, which way which you cannot use with the patients and it's really really nice for each skin type for each body for each age um, because in the end it's always about providing then the firmness of the texture of the skin and the the hydration that you give you give the skin back and in the end the people will just come back and will tell you okay i'm so happy about this treatment because it helps to reduce the age defined um, wrinkles or loss of, of elasticity of the skin. So before going into detail about the combinations, uh, I will just quickly remind you what we all know of, uh, and unfortunately we suffer of that, all of us, is just like the age-related decline in collagen and hyaluronic acid in our body. So in the end, it's just like something where everything just starts from when we are born. So that we age from day one on uh, as soon as we step into this world. This is normal and this should be like that. And we're happy to get older, but as in our twenties, when we are maybe in our thirties, when we are just at the height of our beauty, um, um, it's just like you have a decline of collagen and collagen is something that is now everywhere. You can take it as a supplement, but don't forget you build up collagen on your own as well. And this doesn't stop um, in your 50s or in your 60s. So you'll still be able to provide collagen also for your skin. And if you build it up yourself, it's usually also um, uh, better. And sometimes you need a little bit of help to get there. Um, so what are the approaches in facial aesthetics to achieve this kind of replumbing um, and also just like repairing everything. And so sometimes also it's interesting just to combine um, a different kind of um, uh, approaches to have a better effect. 
So what I like to do is always combination. So I'm a combination guy. I, um, as you um, as you saw, I'm coming from dermatosurgery. surgery. So usually, just um, when you when you just like operate something, and you sometimes just you need to reduce the scar by using maybe a laser, and then maybe just put something in there just to reduce maybe the tension. And so in the end, you can also um, translate this into aesthetics. So what do we do when we have dynamic um, movement or maybe um, these um, dynamic lines? We use neuromodulation just meaning um, uh, botulinum toxin, you can use the hyaluronic acid to reduce the, uh, the, to re um, the reduce the wrinkles by restoring volume, by giving volume where you have just volume depletion. You know, our body just ages by a bone um, um, uh, loss, by loss of um, the fat pads, or maybe just like change and also decline of the, of the fat pads in different areas. And also then by loss of um, the elasticity of the skin, but also muscle aging and uh, is also something where we just know that the ligaments are not maybe holding um, the, the things back as they should be. Um, uh, EBD energy-based devices also come in. So I'm a big fan of the lasers. I'm a big fan of um, radio frequency microneedling. And so there are more different kinds of options that are just like at our hands. And then there are the biostimulators, which is like a big thing at the moment. And think about just like the PLLA, which is, I, uh, I, I guess, one of the oldest ones that we have at our hands because it was developed just like um, end of the 80s. And um, then it was used more for just like volume depletion with HIV patients. And then um, and then it got just got, got, got a little bit forgotten maybe, or maybe just also because there were different kinds of um, the problems with the product, not really problems, but it was just like maybe the administration also the mixture changed over time but it's still a very very good product and also um, just like with the calcium hydroxylapatite which has also had a big revival in the last maybe five six years and now it's just like on vogue again also a, a product which we know for ages and which is really a good um, option just to stimulate the collagen production on a different kind of way so these are things where we can use them, but never forget a biostimulator is not only PLLA or calcium hydroxylapatite or polycaprone lactone acid, hyaluronic acid is also a biostimulator. No? And you can also have biostimulation by microneedling standalone and also with the EBD. So in the end, biostimulation is not only limited to these kind of injectables. So is there... Um, something where we can say is this kind of the fountain of youth do we have something where we can say the mixture of hyaluronic acid and neuromodulators or biostimulators or EPD is just like the fountain of youth maybe it's something where we're getting close to it so just having uh, having found maybe a good combination in a way just to have our uh, beauty restored or maybe preserved or maybe uh, or maybe just like something where we can say we age gracefully but nevertheless, we, we are open to use different kind of modalities. This is a really interesting um, study. This is just like really, really recently. You can see uh, when it was published. And this was, um, it's not just mainly uh, about um, the calcium hydroxylapatite, why I put this in. So it's just mainly showing that for example, the sequential injections of hyaluronic acid and calcium hydroxylapatite had a greater effect on the skin by also by also producing more um, collagen, by also um, um, inducing more elastic fiber production, and in the end, also more angiogenesis. Um, and then in comparison, um, and then for example, when they were just like mixed and injected directly. So in the end, the sequential um, um, injection is something that seems to be better to induce also um, uh, the regenerating processes. And this is something where I feel like, okay, now we're learning more and more about these kind of things and how we can influence our aging. But you know, there are some factors which we can influence and some which we cannot. Um, so you know, intrinsic factors and the intrinsic aging sites in our 20s. Um, so in the end, it's just like everything that um, influences our aging is just like genetics, it's our sex, it's our race, it's our hormones, it's the bone resorption, but it's also the atrophy of the dermis and the subcutis. 
And you can sure have also um, influencing factors from the intrinsic factors. So in the end, it depends also where you live, where, you, where you've been born, how your lifestyle is, or um, what you do, maybe just like with your face. So if you just like talk a lot, as I do, for example, in my outpatient clinic all day long, I feel exhausted. And in the end of the day, I feel also as if everything sags down. No? But sometimes also people say it's facial yoga. So in the end, just as like it depends on where you look at it and also just like on what you want to achieve and what is just like maybe, maybe mainly bothering you. So in the end, um, aging is something that we cannot not do. So we will age every day, but we can try to reduce the signs of aging um, and to seem maybe more beautiful in our 40s than we were just like maybe in our 20s. So in the end, everything is just like about what we can do and what we can offer us and also, also our patients. So our skin changes. You know, I'm a dermatologist, so it's all about skin. It's all about skin vitality. It's all about what we can do to reduce also the skin aged um, the processes there. So we age by losing collagen and elastin, and this modifies the extracellular matrix because our um, uh, rebuilding system um, is a little bit lower. And then in the end, our skin is not that dense anymore. And by losing the density, we lose the firmness and then also the structure of the face. And then in the end, we just also lose the support and the elasticity, and then it just forms the wrinkles. Um, on the other hand, we also lose hyaluronic acid and uh, a less amount of hyaluronic acid means less amount of water in our epidermal areas. And then we just lose the skin turgor. So in the end, is this also a formation of um, fine lines and wrinkles. So there are a lot of options how we can just treat that and how we can restore this. So volume re uh, restoration is something which we can do just like as, an, as, an, as a good treatment with the dermal fillers, we can also use um, 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 lipo fillers, just meaning just like our using our own fat to replenish that. We can, we can do um, lifting with threads, we can do lifting with a surgery, we can use surface treatments um, uh, to reduce this kind of aging process. We can do peelings and lasers or microneedling or you name it. So there are so many things. And we can also um, start to change our lifestyle and maybe just like um, have a look at our nutrition. In the end, also the biostimulators come in. So this is something where I feel like this is just like a small reminder of what we can do and how our aging process works and what we can just achieve. Think about these things that I told you about because later on in the presentation, I will show you what we can achieve by combining different kinds of modalities. So, you know, as doctors, we know that HA improves skin quality. And thanks to social media, even our patients know about these things. So this is really, really important. So we know HA, hyaluronic acid, improves our elasticity of the skin. It gives the firmness of the skin and it hydrates the skin. Um, and it reduces the roughness on the outside. It reduces the fine wrinkles and also the skin imperfections. But also don't forget about the nutrients because it's all about nutrition at the moment. Longevity is a big thing now coming up and there are so many different other things just like coming um, onto the markets. And this is just like some link to what I told you before. So if we have the nutrients, which are just like stabilized in a product and being delivered in the area of concern, when we have just like pigmentation in the skin, when we have pigmentation on the forehead, when we are suffering of small, small fine wrinkles or maybe loss of elasticity, or if we have loss of volume, then we can use um, also the products. And there are so many products on the market claiming also so like a good mixture of any kind of nutrient. But what's important here is that we have with this product, we have kind of stabilized um, uh, uh, surrounding for the nutrients. And not only the hyaluronic acid is stabilized by this special technique, because with this special technique, you have just like a change 
within the structures by putting these nutrients, amino acids, vitamins in, and then you just release them sequentially. And by this, you just have a really better effect. We all know about vitamin C. So it's an antioxidant. Many, many people use it from the external way. But if you inject it, for example, you will have a much, much better effect and you will boost the collagen because it's something that is a cofactor for building up collagen. The B vitamins are really, really important. You know, dexpantenol, you know, all the creams which contain this and also niacinamide, which is just like almost now in every kind of skincare. It's improving the, um, the, the skin barrier function and by this reducing then the inflammation. You have copper and zinc, which are just like essential um, uh, vitamins and they promote not only um, for example, hair growth and helping with the coloration of the hair. They are also essential for the wound healing, for a reduction of inflammation, but also just like in the skin, improving skin firmness. Um, then you have glycine and proline, which are just like amino acids, which are really essential for the buildup of collagen. So that's what I told you about earlier. Collagen is something that we can um, build up um, uh, also in our 50s, if we just give um, our motors a, a little bit of a, of a fuel so that we can just start with this again. And in the end, um, this is just like the biostimulation on its own. What do we want? So what do we want by using maybe standalone products? What do we want by using, for example, combinations? So we want the strengthening of the skin. We want to have a lifting of the skin. We want to induct collagen um, production and we want to enhance the skin elasticity. And these are the things that we are aiming for. These are our targets. And this is something that you can achieve either standalone with these products or you can do them in combination. So which is something that I really, really stress on each time I um, do these kind of lectures or when I'm just traveling abroad from my other colleagues, it's always important um, uh, to have an expectation management and also to have a proper patient selection. So um, that you just ask what is the, uh, bothering the patient? What do they want? What do, did they have done? What is maybe what is possible or what is maybe impossible? And this is also a clear communication also about the realistic outcomes is always crucial. So, so that in the end, um, everyone will be satisfied. And, um, and so um, patient will be satisfied and you will be satisfied also by the results that are possible. Second thing is also, do wherever you feel safer and do wherever you feel like most comfortable with. So if you are more comfortable with a needle, use the needle. Now, if you are comfortable with certain areas where you put with, with a cannula, use the cannula. So usually it's always a mixture of, of all of them, but there are also some things which you can prevent. So if a patient comes in and tells you, okay, I bruise easily, then maybe in certain areas, it's, it's definitely advisable to use the cannula to reduce maybe these kind of side effects that can happen anytime when you just puncture them. So even with a, with a, if you draw blood, it can happen that you just um, develop a bruise. And also just like depending on what you want to achieve, you can also talk openly and think about um, combining different products or maybe just like combining, for example, then the cell booster with a filler, you can combine it with um, uh, with the biostimulator, so PLLA or maybe calcium hydroxylapatite. Um, and you can also combine it maybe, for example, with the, with the neuro neuromodulator. Think about um, um, this as an option and think about this just like the recipe, just like as, as if you would bake a cake and you have the recipe from your mom, uh, but then sometimes you need to adapt it because you don't have any kind of almonds or you, maybe you use hazelnuts then, or maybe you just don't have this kind of white flour, then you use dark flour. In the end, it's always important to know where we're heading and what is possible and what may be um, a good fit. Um, and the second thing, what you just have to think about when I show you these slides later on is just like, most of these combination things are just like some things um, which are just like off label. No? So meaning that if you put something inside of a vial, uh, which is not meant to be like that, then you just need to be sure that you know what you are doing, what you're aiming for. No? The, the second thing um, uh, is just like 
more is not always better. Um, so beware because you have, you know, in one vial, there's three ml inside. And so in the end, you can have really, really good results. For example, for the face, sometimes three ml might not be enough for, for the neck and for the decolletage area. So maybe you need then two vials to have a maximum effect. Um, don't be afraid to use more. This is something really important because if you can, if you have a good um, patient and they tolerate these kind of different things, it's really easy. And then you can just go on with this. Um, if you are um, uh, uh, using it maybe for a body treatment, um, um, for example, with a cell booster shape, um, just think about um, this kind of easy thing. Um, so more, not more than maybe 10 vials in one session. Uh, why is that? Yeah, sure. You can just maybe um, uh, answer this question to yourself. You might have more side effects if you put in more of the product. And depending also where it is, um, it, it, it might cause swelling. It might cause redness, it might cause tenderness at the injection sites. And so in the end, you just have to see what do I want to achieve? Is it is it um, uh, responsible to do that in one session? Maybe it makes more sense to divide that in more sessions, also depending on where you put it, because if you would put um, uh, two vials in the face, it's possible, but it's just like a lot of product because it's six ml in the end, and you just have to distribute it in a way. And then maybe if you just build it up with different kinds of products on top of that, it will be maybe a lot. Um, so think about what you want to achieve. Don't be afraid to use more product. This is really important, but don't exceed it. So let's dive in. Um, so you know, I don't want to go into that too much. You know, as, as injectors, you know about the dynamic wrinkles, you know about the static wrinkles. And um, and then you have sometimes um, people just coming in and telling you, hey, you know what? I had this treatment done with some with somebody else, and so um, uh, a neurotoxin, for example, for the full face is now something that is done uh, widely. And this is also something that I did just like years ago. But this was just like something that was just like coming back a lot. You know? And why should we use the toxin um, uh, as as a neuromodulator maybe in the whole face? And so. Um, there are nice studies if you just put that in, for example, um, on PubMed or maybe in the National Library of Medicine, you will see that there are a lot of things just popping up and showing you publications from uh, even uh, not that long ago. And there are just like even more things just like coming up. Uh, and it's really interesting because, you know, with with low um, uh, micro droplets of um, uh, of intradermal injection of the neurotoxin, you can get really nice results from the face and not just like relaxing uh, the muscle movement, but more is just like for the skin quality. Because with the, with, the, um, with the neurotoxin, you also have a really nice reduction of the sebum production. So you, you, your, your, um, your sebaceous glands are not producing that much anymore. So you have a really, really nice reduction then of the pores. And by this, you have also reduction of, um, of the seborrhea. And by this, usually, which is causing usually a little bit of an inflammation, you, you have a reduction of the erythema as well. So, and this is something where patients are really, really happy about you know, uh, if you can deliver that. And what I like to do is then, why not combine good things in one go? So if you, for example, mix it with which is off label, no? but um, but never mind. We're here on experience level. So if you want to do the glow tox, how I just put it for my patient, no? then mix it with a um, with a cell booster glow because cell booster glow has a really really big capacity of reduction of of redness, but also reduction of pigmentation. And um, you can have really nice results also with rosacea patients or with acne patients suffering then of an overall erythema. And by, by using, for example, then um, uh, this combination of glow and the neuromodulator, you have really nice results um, um, there. But think about using really tiny amounts of the toxin. Um, so it's really important, for example, five to 10 units per milliliter. So five units of, of toxin within of one milliliter of cell booster glow, for example. So if you want to put it 
in in one vial and you and use it for the whole face or maybe also for the neck area it's maximum it's something in between 15 to 30 units for the full face if you are following different kind of other um, um injectors all over the world you will see they use more amounts of units of toxin for the whole face but they also know in which areas to put it more shallow or more deep or where you want to have the effect um, this is also again really really important you need to put it really really superficial so intradermal and um, and the, the other thing is what you need to think about is to say what do i want to achieve um, and what is the anatomy? So what kind of muscles do I have there? Because if you inject in the in the DLI, for example, you, uh, you might have um, uh, encounter problems. If you inject it in the resorius area, you might encounter problems. So always know your anatomy and always think about not going too deep. No? So do it really, really superficial. Then you are aiming for the skin. Then you are aiming for what you want to achieve because we want to go here not too much down there so combination of a hyaluronic acid and the cell booster so the cell booster is something where you need to be really really careful in the way how you want to put it because you can do it first you can do it later, depends a little bit just like also on the area. Um, so depending on what I want to do, sometimes I like to use the cell booster first for a better integration, for example, for the filler in an area where I usually um, uh, wouldn't inject the cell booster so deep, um, some deep dermal or maybe even sub-Q, depending on what I'm going to use later on. So for example, if I use calcium hydroxylapatite and don't mix it directly with the product, again, off-label, um, uh, and I do it just like sequentially, how I learned it now from the from the studies that um, that just like um, sequential use of the product is usually better in a way um, and to deliver more um, collagen induction. Now think about the paper I showed you before. Um, then it's just like something where you can achieve these kind of perfect uh, things. And in the end, you just also have to know what do I want to achieve because if I put. Um, uh, um, a mixture of a glycerin um, uh, filler, then the glycerin is something that binds the water. And so it has to be injected intradermally. If you inject it subcutaneously, the glycerin won't have the desired effect in that area because the glycerin cannot bind water um, in the subcube. So it doesn't make sense. So in, the, in a way, it would make sense maybe to put uh, something deeper and then on top of the glycerin, or maybe in this way, for example, you use the filler in a deeper area and then you use the um, ironic acid, meaning then hope um, the um, cell booster in a in a um, upper area of the skin. Here, for example, you see a patient um, of mine. The black dots are for the hyaluronic acid. So meaning here we are going for a filler or volumization filler where we are restoring then uh, the bony tissue and also um, uh, having just like a um, resplenishing effect there. And the red cross is for the parts where I injected then the cell booster. So this is just like a video going a little bit um, faster and you can see the areas where I just in where I'm injecting directly, for example, on the bone, pre-auricular, uh, pre I will just go in the um, subcutaneous tissue to um, um, uh, resplenish then the area here, for example, there I'm going, in, I'm injecting then in the fat pad um, here on the chin area. And then you can see this is, has kind of lifting effect because I'm injecting in the points, just like on the zygomatic arch, I'm just injecting here in the angular um, part of, um, of the mandibula and also then here in the chin area. So I have a stretching effect in these areas. So to have a kind of lifting effect by pulling it backwards. Then you saw from this video here, where I injected then in the parts where I did not inject any kind of filler. So then I went in with a cannula to do just like a perioral approach there because you can see these smile lines there. And so to have a really, really nice effect then as well. And then you can also put it and place it on top. And then you can see you almost need one vial per side. And so in the end, it just depends a little bit just like on how you plan it and what you can do. 
So you can also put like three ml of um, a cell booster shape at one side, but depending a little bit just like on what you want to achieve and also want to know what you're planning for. So these are just the direct before and after pictures. And here you can see how nice the curve is better, how I replace the mid phase of volume and how you just have this kind of stretching effect here and here before this kind of rippling effect she had in her jowls. And also from the frontal um, part where you can see now the definition is a lot nicer and this kind of volume depletion she had in the mid phase, which is only done by cell booster lift. Um, I didn't inject any kind of filler in that area. Um, and you can see how more harmonic the face just looks. This is also same approach, different kind of age. Um, so you can see, you can use the same approach with different um, um, age types, male or female, doesn't matter. And in the end, it's just like always about the skin quality. You can see how the skin has been just uplifted and you can see also this kind of nice, nice curve here, for example, here, she, she was just like more pointy in the chin area. And this has been done just like by using then the fillers in this area to uh, avoid an overly projection of the chin. PLLA. Um, PLLA is something where the combination really makes a lot of sense to me, to be honest, because you have to think PLLA is polylactic acid and it's working differently, for example, in its mode of action than the hyaluronic acid. So providing maybe a pro-inflammatory approach to build up that collagen. And by um, by having that said um, and being uh, a dermatologist, pro-inflammatory always makes me a little bit of shiver. And you think, hmm, is this a good way to, to have that done? But if you just have the results and you know, for example, how to dilute it and how to avoid any kind of um, 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 structural scar-like um, uh, results, no? then you will have a really, really good product at our hands and a really, really good product that is just like also long, long on the market. And here you can see, for example, how I administer that. No? So using a cannula and going then, for example, in the areas of concern and then just um, um, giving just like this kind of volume back in the areas. And the good thing about the PLLA is you don't add any volume uh, um, uh, there because you just dilute it with sterile water. The sterile water is being absorbed. The PLLA is in the area where you put it. And mainly you have to put the PLLA deep in the sub -cube, and then you will have really good results there. So, and then if you sprinkle the, um, uh, the cell booster lift on top, you will have just two things before we go to the calcium hydroxyl appetite. You will have two things that can happen because you have the uh, PLA in there, which will be just then and, um, distributed to tell the patient to massage in that area. But when you put the hyaluronic acid, so the cell booster lift on top of that, you will also reduce this kind of overly um, um, pro-inflammatory um, reaction. You will have a direct effect for the patient. You will have a, you will um, still have volumizing effect, even though it's not like a filler, but it never Nevertheless, it will have a really good result with this. Calcium hydroxyl appetite, same um, idea. Again, um, this is how I do it. I mix it. So I mix calcium hydroxyl appetite and cell booster lift directly in one syringe and then inject it. Again, off label, but um, uh, you have just like uh, the best of both worlds. Sure, um, if you put the cell booster lift in, uh, in the sub Q or maybe in the deep dermal area, you just have to know what kind of limitations come then with the product. But um, you have you don't forget about this kind of stabilized complex with the amino acids and with the nutrients and vitamins. So you have a really nice effect of collagen boosting down there. And if you think later on for the for the for maybe an ongoing process, you can put it on top of the calcium hydroxyl appetite again. No? Here, nice results for the patient. No? Um, he looks masculiner. He looks more, his skin is so much better. You can see the reflection with the skin. And this is really something that you can achieve with a lot of patients. And this is, for example, then also a picture just um, like three months or four months after the first treatment. And it's really something really good. 
So because of time reasons, I'm just speeding up a little bit, no? but uh, you see, I like to talk a lot about these kind of things and combination with lasers is the next thing that can just usually comes in. So again, depending on what kind of laser you use, you can use the laser first and then use the cell booster behind, after it. So usually this sequence is good for ablative lasers or for fractional lasers. If you want, if you use an IPL, for example, or a BBL, you can use it also differently by putting by putting then the product before to reduce, for example, the rednesses and also prepare the skin and prepare um, and the kind of collagen induction. And then um, uh, you do that two weeks before the laser, then you laser, and then you do it directly after the laser, maybe half an hour later, so that when the skin has cooled down and then you will have really nice results. And you will also reduce um, the um, downtime and speed up the recovery. Again, hyaluronic acid, binding water, helping to reduce this kind of inflammative process. And then the vitamins come in and also the micronutrients and amino acids which build up the collagen much faster again biostimulation like twice through the laser and the cell booster as i told you ipl again really good good combination option glow toxin and ipl reduction of um, pores reduction of redness reduction of uh, of facial erythema and then if you just go on top of that with a with a skin revitalizing ibl or bbl you will reduce the wrinkles you will reduce the um uh, the pigmentation you will reduce the redness so really really good thing to combine you know? And then uh, you will have really good results with it. No? Again, combination, for example, if you have body issues. No? So this is also something. So radio frequency microneedling is something that is really, really um, popular at the moment. No? Um, and then for pet reduction, for example, uh, for cellulitis, it's really a good thing to combine. So you see, I did... Um, uh, for cellulitis and for uneven skin um, uh, in the in the in um, uh, body areas, you can just use the microneedling radio frequency, wait a little bit until the skin cools off, and then inject the cell booster shape for uh, for a um, facilitated um, option to reduce the edema, to reduce cellulitis, and to reduce the fat accumulation. Same thing, for example, also for the periorbital or areas. Um, so if you just have um, uh, not only the wrinkles, but maybe just like a little bit of, a, of an edema in that area, you can use also the, um, uh, the microneedling radio frequency in that area. Um, just always think about what is causing the problem. If Can you address it with maybe standalone or maybe you can just um, combine it? Here, I combine it then um, with a cell booster shape. Again, wait a little bit until we have the best um, temperature then there, because it will be a waste of product to them to put it in when the temperature is really high. And so in the end, you can just inject it um, um, in these areas. No? And you know, may know these videos or maybe also have been trained and you can see, for example, these are deep injections then for the um, periorbital area no? by, um, by marking then um, uh, these spots from the from the medial to the lateral canters, from the from the um, ala of the nose to the um, um, uh, to the um, to the tragus. So um, uh, there will be just like also videos and trainings for these kind of injection technique. But this is something for advanced um, injectors. But this is what it's all about today. No? To talk about the options which um, for the advanced injectors and also what we can do to have a really good effect, not only by reduction of um, the wrinkles, but also maybe a reduction of facial edema, to have a um, to have a reduction of the malar edema, sometimes which can happen after placing the filler in the wrong plane in these areas. So you can maybe sometimes also help the patients by doing these kind of combinative um, uh, um, um, therapies. Same option, for example, here, I'm sure the model doesn't have that much of, a, of excessive skin or maybe just like laxity in that area. But here again, some markings where you can facilitate just like the injections of um, of the cell booster shape to reduce not only um, the fat, but also to um, um, to avoid any kind of edema, to reduce um, uh, uh, to reduce this kind of accumulation. So these are just the things what you can do, and you can see the injections are done pretty easy, pretty fast, and you can see when you are just like experienced, even one handed is no problem at all. Um, maybe. 
here again love handles um, also something which is just like really nice and when people just are coming and asking for a lipolytic treatment but are afraid of the pain that the uh, that the uh, phosphatidylcholic acid or maybe the, um, uh, the other products are on the uh, which are on the market and just like offering then I usually opt for the cell booster shape after that and um, you can um, you can just help the patients to reduce any kind of things um, Last but not least, um, let's talk about combination also for Cell Booster Hair. Cell Booster Hair, a great product, really, really um, um, helpful um, with fighting hair loss and also with alopecia patients and uh, had really, really nice results. And this is something where I just like also like to combine, for example, using a low level laser to activate um, the, um, the hair follicles and then um, uh, inject the cell booster hair on top to sprinkle this kind of hydration and also vitamins there where you need it and in the end you will have really nice results with your patients so i'm sorry that i will was um speeding up the last parts of it so we should if you should have any questions just let me know um, um you can just reach me um, via Instagram, via LinkedIn, via um, emails, but also um, via um, Swissell. And I'm really grateful for Swissell to give me the opportunity to talk about this today. And I'm happy for your questions. Let me just have a look. So if you have any questions, please put them into the questions and answer part so that we can see them and then we, maybe we can discuss them. No? So there was one question asking how many sessions can we do with Cell Booster Glow? No? So it depends on what you want to achieve, depending a little bit just like if it's pigmentation, you might need at least maybe three to six um, sessions, depending a little bit just like also on the skin type of the patient, depending a little bit just like on what you um, what you are aiming for, if it's mainly for the redness or maybe reduction of um, of the of the erythema, um, you can also do it just like only three times, it, depending a little bit just like and also just like on the on the skin reaction also on the combination options that you have there. Uh, another question is, is there a minimum amount of fat required to use cell booster shape on the face? Well, no. You can um, uh, you can use it um, also with the cell booster shape. It, um, the important thing is it's not a lipolytic. Now, because of the combination of the L-carnitine and the vitamin C, you just have a kind of different kind of mode of action than there, so you don't melt the fat away. So you can also use it like at the full face. It's, it's possible, um, and uh, I've done that as well, also with the micropapular technique. But if you want to if you want to have a, a shaping effect, then then you, you need to put um, um, the, um, the the injections a little deeper, um, but this is something where you just have to be a little bit more cautious. Uh, another question is: um, Do you have any experience with injecting patients prone to keloids? So I have patients from all over the world here in Zurich, and also there are just like um, and patients who are more prone to keloids, but. If you inject with a fine needle, um, uh, then the likelihood of, of um, inducting um, a keloids with this is just like something I've never seen that. No? Because, because even though I have patients who develop maybe a keloid after, after um, uh, maybe piercing the ear or maybe just like after having an excision, but if you just inject something inside there, I've never seen a keloid happening from an injection. Um, so, 
no problem at all. If you want to, if you may be asking if we can use the product for um, therapy of keloid or something like that, this is also something where you just can, um, uh, for example, use a little bit of a cell booster, um, a lift with um, triamcinolone, for example, and then it's possible. Uh, the cell booster shape um, isn't lipolytic, so it doesn't melt the fat away. How does it work? Um, so uh, you just can explain it to your patient that cell booster shape is the unique product um, containing L-carnitine um, as a main agent, which is helping to um, bring or oxidize the fat in in a kind of um, in a kind of um, uh, special cycle um, and um, 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 turning it into and into energy. No? So, but um, uh, if you have a look at um, a previous webinars or maybe if you if you ask also your supplier for more support there are um, also good slides about how the mode of action of um, a shape is and also just like how to maybe facilitate this also to your patients so because it it works by um, turning the fat into energy maybe this is the easiest way to put that to, for your patients without the pain without the swelling without um, any kind of side effects even if you inject it in the skin you won't have any kind of problems which with a lipolytic would be a really really big problem next question is mixing cell booster and botox how many units can we use for the entire phase so um Important um, uh, that I showed it in, in uh, one of my slides. So um, uh, the important thing about um, this is just like to know uh, what you're aiming for. So in the end, it's just like depends uh, five units per one milliliter, for example, maximum 10 units per one milliliter of the product. If you put it into the vial, which is off label um, again, so because you're changing a little bit like the rheology of the product, but if you put, for example, then into a three ml vial, you can put max minimum 10 to 15, maximum 25 to 30 units. So, and um, next question is just, uh, which one can be used to reduce redness and inflammation after Morpheus? So I um, uh, use the cell booster glow for this, uh, but you can also use the cell booster lift. It's also depending a little bit just like on what kind of patient you have. If, you, if you're using the Morpheus and the full face, for acne scars, then it makes sense to use a cell booster lift because you have more of a capacity to conquer against the acne scars, to have a more buildup of collagen. And um, this would be just maybe the better product for you. If you are um, uh, doing this for an overall complexion and the patient um, is just want wanting a maybe better um, kind of skin, maybe reduced um, pores. And um, so then you can use, um, for example, then the Skin Booster Glow. Um, so decide on what you want to achieve, decide on what the patient's condition is, and then you can just see what yourself, what might be suitable best for your patient. Next question, can you talk about a little bit more about cell booster hair? So cell booster hair is, uh, as I told you, it, this came a little bit short, but the combination only with low level laser is the only combination I use in my clinic, but you can use also um, the, the cell booster hair, um, uh, but you need at least six sessions with two weeks intervals to have good results. You will, and the patient will always come back to you and tell you even after injection of maybe two sessions that the hair is getting more coarse, that they feel that the hair is a little bit, um, that you, they feel that it's something going on. And if you take really good pictures, you can see already just after the second injection that there's going something, but um, mainly fo follow the protocol. Use six in, in, in injections with two weeks interval. So after 12 weeks, I would say you will see the most difference. Um, and then this is also what you can ask, tell your patient. Um, can you treat the vertical perioral lines with multiple needle injections instead of using a cannula? Sure, you can, but uh, it's more painful. Um, and if you don't want to put an, um, if you don't want to do a dental block for the patient, that it is not uh, that painful, 
then I would always um, um, suggest using the cannula because it's always a little bit nicer. And with the cannula, the cannula goes a little bit just like in between that area. And then uh, and then you can avoid hitting a, maybe a smaller blood vessel or um, or maybe just like also the, 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 the border of the lip is really, really sensitive. And if you keep injecting a lot, a lot with, um, with tiny, tiny needle pricks, then after some time, the patient will maybe just tell you, okay, now it's enough for today. Um, so it's always better to do that with a cannula in these areas, but you can always inject also with needle injections. Um, um, my patients usually don't like this kind of numbing cream because it has no real effect. And in the end, for example, if you inject glow or lift, it still burns. Um, next question, what about glow for body hyperpigmentation? What is the amount that you need? Again, depending a little bit just like on where you, uh, where you just um, um, put it. So if, you, um, if, you, if you're aiming maybe for hyperpigmentation in the, um, in the axilla, then, um, um, then, then usually one vial is enough. Go, you know where the pigmentation happened. It happens in the dermis. So put it intradermally, and then you will know, okay, where do we have the result? And then one vial, maybe per arm or per axilla is fine. No? Sometimes maybe you need only two ml and then it would be too little for the other side. No? So it's also a little bit just like depending, if you maybe just measure it with your hand and then say, okay, this is the area, then sometimes you need something something between one or two ml. And then you just have to decide if the patient is okay also with the pricing. No? But you can also use it in, in the uh, in the um, nether region. So you can use it in the uh, in the inguinal um, region. You can use it in a scrotal region, vaginal regions it's also um, an option it's painful no? and uh, but but you, but you have to put it in the intradermal area which is usually not that nice also for the patient um i think the next question is just going um, because of the cannula and also with the depth of the perioral area no? so this is way way it is you just put it just like the um, sub dermal um just like in between the border between um, between the dermis and the um, uh, this area. So in the end, you just have to see, um, see that you are gliding easily in this area, no? and then it's um, and then you're just like on the safe zone because if it's, um, if it glides easy, then you might be in, uh, too deep. In the subcutaneous tissue, if you are in the dermal area, you will see you will have some ret retaining ligaments there. So just like these kind of um, retinaculi cutis, but then you just go through them, you will have this kind of rippling sound, and then you know you're just, you're just right in the area where you want to be and where you want to put the product to have the best effect. Can your cannula injection be used in the goiter area? Neck with shape for localized fat periocular area. So, uh, yes, you can uh, in the neck area. Um, yeah, it just like uh, depending a little bit, just like um, uh, how strong and how strict the um, the um, the skin is, because in the neck area the skin is quite strong, and with the cannula you might need a big force for this. No, maybe this area would be maybe a little bit easier with the um uh, with the needle, but if you don't want to go um too deep or maybe avoid uh, some things, then and then the cannula is fine. But I think then you need at least a 22 gauge cannula, uh, which will not bend too easily. So you need some some strict thing to follow. Um, next question would be, do we need to combine lidocaine to cell booster before injection? So uh, I never mix lidocaine in the cell booster but i know from uh, from different visits also in different countries that this is a question mainly asked always just like in 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 asian countries or also also in, in, the, in the arabic countries because people are more pain sensitive so what you can do is it sure you can but again this is something where you change a little bit like the product if you put something inside of there but you could and you can um, so you can put one ml of um, uh, one percentage lidocaine inside of the vial of the hair mainly and then you can mix that you can also use it with a glow but usually if you put um, uh, 
uh, and topical lidocaine or tetracaine cream on, leave it on for half an hour, and then and then um, do it. You saw it also in the video. And then you can just inject really really fast, and it's really really easy, and it's not that painful for the patient because you saw in the pic in the video the people don't even flinch. Huh? From my experience, what is the duration of the result? So this is also dependent a little bit just like on um, how many sessions you did, because um, one session is no session. So uh, we, all, we have a saying in, in German, uh, einmal ist keinmal, so meaning just a one time is no time. So in the end, it's just you cannot have a, you cannot have a ongoing really good result with only one um, session of anything. So in the end, you just have to, you just have to talk to your patient and tell them, okay, if if we do it repeatedly, you will have a better collagen induction. Your body will work with these things that we give them. And so it's just like a fertilizer. So in the end, you just if you just water your plants only one time, they will maybe glow and grow maybe for a short time, and then they will dry out again. So you need to water the plants and you need to water the garden and to have a really nice garden there as well. So in the end, you just have to um, do it repeatedly. If you um, um, do it three times, four times, depending on what kind of products you are talking about, lift, glow, shape, you will have better results um, um, also over time. Um, if you are aiming more for the reduction of the fat, um, uh, then sometimes a combination is always just like um, the best. No? But you will also see that you will have nice results with the shape for, for um, um, the parts here, just like in the... In, um, under the chin area. And here, as the question was before, you can also place it with a cannula, it's fine. You will only have here um, uh, the problem that um, uh, the fat deposits are just like, really close to the skin next, and, and uh, also close to the muscle and everything. So in the end, sometimes um, a placement with the needle is easier. What cannula do you use for the perioral lines? Uh, 25 gauge, 38 millimeters. That's the easiest because it, it's, it bends easier. You have just like a better control with this. 22 gauge is possible, but it will be too rigid and maybe too painful. Uh, next question, under eye injection protocol with lift and glow, patient seduction and expectation management. Uh, yes, so if you do it under the eyes, um, so I like to use uh, the cell booster shape for the under eye area now because of different kind of reasons um and i stopped doing a filler um, in the in the under eye area so uh, i don't use any kind of fillers anymore since i have the cell booster so what i do is i give support with the filler in the mid phase and also just like in the um, around the zygomatic arch and then later on i just start to do the injections with the cell booster shape you can go deep with the shape as i as i showed you with the um uh, with the cannula and then you can go um, above you can go do these micro papilla techniques um, depending on what you, how you want it and how you want to deliver it and maybe also what the patient also is expecting um if you are um, asking for um, hyperpigmentation under the eyes, and then uh, you will be amazed that even you can you can also get that with shape because you also have the hyaluronic acid, you have the buildup of the um, of the dermis, you have the skin skin strengthening. Um, uh, if you have an older patient with wrinkles in this area, I would just maybe opt for the lift. This is also possible. Again, we're on an off label in um, uh, area, um, um, but it works perfectly fine. And you saw that, for example, what I did with a patient here with these micropapillas around the eyes and going up to the upper eyelid with the glow, this is also possible. So um, just if, see if you have a, a really, really big loss of, um, of elasticity under the eyes, then I would maybe start to build up um, uh, the dermal area again. So maybe use lift in this area. If you have hyperpigmentation, mainly just like also in the, in the countries where it's a little bit more sunny or where the people are also a little bit more darker in skin color, then glow is the um, is the thing to go. And then I would just um, um, tell the patients that we can reduce a bigger um, um, pigmentation or maybe just like cells which are just more filled with pigments um, um, uh, around maybe 20, 
percent. So in the end, it's just like something where you will have a really good um, result by the reduction, but it's an ongoing treatment, as I told you. And then you also have to think about um, the sun exposure. So uh, not to ruin your work that has been done. And so in the end, depending on what kind of patient you have, what kind of um, um, problem they suffer, it's also key to think about that. And shape is something that is good for people who have edema, with people who have produced fat, with people who are suffering of of a, a, of, of a, um, a depletion in that area, for people who are just like uh, also having problems um, with the with the with the with the dark circles around the eyes. Um, so you can also use the shape, which is easy. Next question for the perioral lines: Would you use only lift? No. You can use you can use lift. You can use um, um, you can also use glow. No? And if you want, you can also use shape. No? So this is also fine. So no limitation for this area. Why is the thirty ml treatment limit? So this is something that um, is just like um, um, coming from uh, the area of. Um, where you treat it so it depends if you if you are having good results or if you have patients who are willing um, uh, to have um, a bigger area done and so as I did for example with the love handles if you want to do for example um, the fat accumulations um, uh, in the abdomen part then you then you definitely need more of the product but you also have a big loss of product in these areas because because of the of the fat um, that is there and so in the end it's just like um, uh, more of 10 vials uh, makes less sense to me because it will be you will have a really big amount of injection and then in the end you will you will lose a lot of product you might suffer of swelling and uh, of, of also side effects just like maybe um, irritation then of the of the of the area so i wouldn't even inject 30 ml of a lipolytic um, and, and this is something where, which i wouldn't exceed then with a cell booster because you can also have really nice results with less of the product and so why exceed that and um, make more problems to yourself So if there are, yeah, you're welcome. So if there are any questions, no, um, please put them in the questions and answers part. No? And um, I'm happy to share my experiences, no? even though some of them are off label. No? But you know, as doctors, we always play around a little bit. And um, by experience, I can tell you what we can achieve by this no? but this is just like also the thing about today's webinar if you should have any kind of open questions please get in contact with swissell so info at swissell.com and then um, you will get answers as soon as possible and if there are any kind of um, questions to me you can always approach me also via um, the contacts I gave you before so oh one or two questions still coming in so let's make them um, quickly any suggestions for under eye bags fat use um, um, cell booster shape no? um, depending a little bit just like on how, where the accumulation is you can also go with this kind of deep injection but always um, um, uh, um, always choose your patient wisely and um, and see if it's only fat or if it's just like edema as well because with the shape you might conquer both of them but maybe you can do it in two different kind of um, approaches one deep one superficial and then see but don't exceed it too much because if you have already swollen um, area and you inject something it will be more swollen so really really um, um, think of that uh, uh, one question still now is it safe to inject lipomas lipated subdermally with shape proven after analysis so i don't know about a study where uh, or maybe just like or not even um so not even something where people just did that no? i don't do that 
because lipoma is usually something which you which you can usually excise and as a dermatosurgeon it's it's easy if it's a flat one just leave it right? because in the end the scar will be maybe a little bit more problematic to the patient than that um, and, uh, and also and uh, i know of um, of colleagues who tried to inject lipomas with a lipolytic no? but uh, not really successful to be honest um so i um i would not inject the lipoma with shape you can give it a try but mm -mm. Good. So if there are no questions anymore, then I want to thank you for your questions and also for being part of this webinar. And I'm looking forward to seeing you at a conference or maybe next time. online or offline oh one question still do you combine glow with botox after you combine botox with saline sure yes so you have to reconstitute the botox or any kind of brand of the neuromodulator which you're using and then you take out five units per one milliliter and then you just and then you just um, mix it like that Sure, you're welcome. So then if there are no questions anymore, then I would say thank you very, very much for your attention. Thank you very much for the, for the questions. And then, as I told you, I'm looking forward to seeing you online, offline, or if you should have any questions about these kind of um, uh, options that I gave you today, um, just in, get in contact with Swissell, as I told you, info at swissell.com, or get in contact with me. I'm always happy to answer your questions. So thank you and goodbye. <laughs>